And that is a lovely punch from Craig Brathwaite, who is just doing Craig Brathwaite things. A great opportunity to chat with the West Indies captain Craig Brathwaite in the build-up as we get ready for this Apex Test Series between England and the West Indies for the Richards Botham Trophy. Craig, thanks very much for your time. A significant series, one of the more significant ones. How are you feeling? Excited, to be honest. It's always a, a nice series to play against England, uh, especially you know with the fans, the Barmy Army coming out. You know, it's always a special you know series for us, and you know we're really excited about it. As a young man or as a kid coming through, what were your earliest memories of a West Indies England series? Well, for me, I would say when I was in kiddies cricket, I went to the spin the toss with Gail and Strauss at the time. I was probably 12, 13 years old. They have a picture with it. And that was one of my first memories. I know, you know, I'm the captain, so that's pretty amazing. You know, I'm truly thankful, you know, for, for the opportunity. And, you know, it's I me mean, playing for batting is always a, is, is a dream. I know you're a man of the people. You mingle wherever you go. Do you get a sense of what an England West Indies test series means to the people of the Caribbean? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, I mean, one instance is like Bangladesh, you know, the wind there, you know, really hit, you know, all the Caribbean people. But, you know, it's especially England. And this is from, from back in the days, from me watching highlights, you know, when, you know, Sir Clive Boy was captain and stuff. You know, playing against England is always something special, you know, for the, for the people in the region. And, you know, obviously we not in the Caribbean naturally get a lot of tourists, you know, for, for our season. And especially in Barbados, you know, where that's our real income. And it's always special, you know, somehow, whether it's true, you know, the Barmy Army, you know, more fun time to come out, you know, because cause the test series always has more energy in it. And you know, that's what I told the guys is, you know, let's enjoy it because it's a special series and it's one of the most exciting series, you know, for us as, as a team, especially home. How do you prepare? Give us some insight into to your mental and technical preparation for a test series like this. Let me say a month and beyond away from a series. Uh, let's say I'm at home. Obviously, we put it in, you know, tactical work and you know, technical work as well. You know, with coach, my personal coach back home. You know, from drills to machine. You know, I, I will go hard at that. Obviously, you're doing gym and, and, and running as well. As I get closer, like we had a camp here for a week and a half, and basically, we, we were very fortunate to get in the middle. You know, at a big ground, and you know, basically, we had nets every day, good pitches. So I would have just have, you know, the knocks every day. After each session, I always make sure I do my drills, which is, you know, basically top hand drills, because that's always important for me once I get my top hand working, uh, which is 10 minute drill after every session. And then like two days, you know, away from a, a match, I will have a, a facing bowlers again. I think for me getting closer to matches, facing bowlers in the nets as an opener is always crucial, because, you know, it gets you sharp and uh, that's crucial for me. And then the day before, you know, I would just, you know, relax my mind, go in the middle and do some shadow batting and just imagine, you know, what they want to do in this game for the bowlers. Imagine them running in, you know, from both ends, spend as much time out there as possible, whether it's a half hour doing it. And just getting that rhythm of like, spending time out here. So some game. visualization. Yeah, visualization is very important for me. You're very good at putting those blinkers on and, and settling into to your job as a leading batsman, now the additional responsibility of leadership and bringing your team with you. Talk to me a little bit about now the team side as a leader. For me, I'm a natural leader, to be honest. From school days, you know, I like to be in front, you know, whether it's running laps or doing the stretching. And I lead from the front with my actions. So then, you know, it's easy for guys to follow. But, you know, at times you still got to you know, call a spade a spade at, at times. But one thing for me, I like to lead by action. You know, per se, I'm not a man of a lot of words, but I think action goes a long way and discipline, both as a batting group and a bowling group. But, you know, for me, I enjoy leading. I enjoy captaining, that, that's the truth. I really enjoy it. Even when I go back to my club, you know, Wonders, you know, I, I always like the captain because I think you learn on the job. You know, the only way you get better is when you go through different experiences and, now I've been through a good set and looking to be through more and I just keep learning as a leader. But one thing for me, I like to lead with my actions. 
that's one thing I've noticed watching you from the start of your career, which is a long time ago now. Yeah, I never yeah, thought yeah. I'd say that about Craig Bradley though, 12 years ago. You've become to me more aggressive in your tactical output. Would that be fair or not? Yeah, I think so. Would have learned a lot, especially playing early on. You know, at times, you know, could have argued not ready at that point. And then especially as a captain, a lot of different experiences I was in as a first class captain. And then playing test cricket. So I think tactically then you, you learn at certain points, we gotta be disciplined to stick to the plan. Guys back two sessions without losing a wicket. But we were under three runs of over. So that's a good job. Once we stay in it, potentially even if you don't board what we could get two or three wickets. And you know, test cricket is always a grind and things don't happen fast. So I think sticking in and being disciplined goes a long way through a, a three sessions, you know, six hours in a day. Building up to the series, you had a double hundred in the West Indies Championships. What was that like? Hard work, for sure. The first game, you know, he got two starts and then go on. I remember a guy, call him Indian. You know, his nickname is Indian, the umpire. And he would have seen me after the first game because I gave him my hand, you know, in the first innings. Because he's a good friend of my father's. He told me, see this next game was the first test match. And I mean, that stuck with me despite Mentally, yeah, I, I want to prepare well and stuff, but that stuck with me. So I just decided in that game, you know, once I get in, I'm not going to give it my hand. It's, and I see it as a test game. You know, sometimes you can take first ass games for granted. I don't want to take it as serious as you should. So I just decided to buckle down. You know, when I got to 100, I said, well, look, no, no, good boy has to get you out. And for me, that's how I went through the whole innings. Even at 200, I, I just decided I'll keep going. And the pitch was a, was a good one. Really enjoyed one of the best pitches that Kent and I would have had. And I knew that from before the game. So I knew like once I get in on this pitch, I am not taking it for granted. And I enjoyed it. You know, I think the time I spent for me was most important. Obviously the runs was superb, but for me, time is, is crucial. Because time in test cricket is very important because it's five days and not four. So, you know, for me, I was very pleased with the time I spent. And obviously that was very good preparation because that was like 10 hours of batting. So it's nothing in the nets, you know, can't provide you with that sort of time in the middle. So, you know, for me, the time was very good and I was very happy to obviously get a double, you know, just continuing forward and, and keep improving as a player. A landmark of the highest order for Craig Brathwaite. Test century number nine, he becomes the 18th West Indies Test captain to score one. If you were to put your finger on one thing, what do you think has made you, Craig Bradford, the player and person that you are now? I think putting God first for me is very important. You know, to be honest, that's the main thing. You know, at times I don't think that, that I could back to the extent of the skill level of some guys. I was playing an intermediate game in about third form and a three-day game at the evening time I was I got out because I used to like to play a lot of shots as a, as a youngster. So I, I got out and the next day, next Saturday we had to come back and two guys back for the whole day and made 180, 170 a piece. And I looked on that and I was like, no, this can't work. And this is me at, at 14 years old, 13. So he decided we're playing some, Mr. Astro was there, putting some hard work in the nets, doing a lot of drills. And the next game we just decided we'll buckle down and leave all the big shots. And I scored a double against Rema. Rema was in that team, Rema Rifa. Somehow, I was, my mental strength was, was always a strength of mine. I knew my strengths. I knew I couldn't play. I just decided to wait on it. And I'm not too sure how I would develop it, to be honest. But I just knew I didn't have the shots like some guys. And that made me have to work harder. So my mental strength, you know, is really my strength. You talk a lot about family, and of course, you wear a special pin, your, your late granny's pin. Tell me a little bit more about that and why. One thing with my grandmother and grandfather, they have may not have necessarily been at my games at a young age. You know, grandpa was coming you know, up primary school, he was there uh, at a few of the games. But obviously at the age, you know, they're out, they can they can go to games. But the support and all the prayers they would have put for me, you know, from primary school, you know, from me having asthma, not having it anymore to this age is, is been remarkable. Without them, I would not be here. I would not be playing cricket because I, I, I never thought I was that talented. Right. You know, I was an athlete. I, I used to run, but cricket ways, I don't think I got the talent like some guys. You know, the hard work was instilled. You know, the prayer was there, and 
without them, I, I don't think I'll be here, to be honest. You talk about being an athlete. I remember one tour of New Zealand, I think the last tour of New Zealand, a former West Indian cricketer's wife was there from Barbados. I wouldn't say who it is. And she came up to me and she said, look at Craig. I can't believe how big and strong Craig has gotten. And I'm looking at Craig and I'm thinking, really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that, that you've developed physically? I still think I could put on a more mass, but at times I put in some work and I just don't see, see growth. So I tell myself at times, I just can't really get that sort of big way. But for sure, I feel stronger. All right. <laughs> How do you want them to think about you as a leader? Do you care what they think about you as a leader? Yeah, I care about my team and how do they think about me. Not necessarily how people may think, because you know, some people may like leaders that, you know, shouting and, and you know, different manner. Originals. Obviously, I'm a, a that's quite not quiet, but no, that's not me. And some people may like that, and I can't be upset with them for that. Obviously, people want performance, and I pretty much not upset with them, you know, for wanting performance. And obviously, I will go about my way of doing things to get the performance, you know, for, for the Caribbean people. And for me, that is most important. In closing, England, 100 against them in Grenada a few years ago, 195 at Leeds in 2017. That moment special? Both moments special, but obviously Headingley was was amazing because we won. And that was the first time we won a game in England, you know, for a while. For me, that was a special, special moment. Unfortunate not to, you know, get double hundreds, but obviously Shea did a, a superb job and got them. It was truly amazing. I mean, the, the home series we had last time against them, you know, for me was very amazing. If not one of the best series in my career thus far, winning a series against England. Because, you know, England is always a formidable team. And you always get great experience playing against England, to be honest. You know, from wins to, you know, to doing well as a batter. So, you know, really, really looking forward to the series. And, you know, really looking forward to making the people in the region, you know, smile and, you know, be proud. As I listen and see that chopper passing by, that's our time to go, not to jump on it. But yeah, thank yeah. you very much, Craig. Yeah, and pleasure, all the man. very best to you. Yeah, thanks a lot.